Good morning. It's Michael Lipinski. I've got a 937 on Friday, July 10th, 2020. 2020 is hindsight. Hindsight is 2020. Annotating with project and shared parameters. Every element of project has a list of parameters. Some of these parameters, such as assembly code and mark, are commonly uh, com are common parameters that are assigned to almost all types, all object types, such as length, height, and volume. Every element of project has parameters. There's a list of them. Some elements have more parameters than others. Some of these parameters, such as assembly code and mark, are common parameters that are assigned to almost all types. Others, such as length, height, and volume, are unique to specific element types. Despite the plethora of default parameters, there are situations where you may need to add custom parameters to elements. These custom parameters, like the default ones, can be tagged and scheduled. Depending on how you'd like to use a custom parameter, you can add them to your elements in a few ways. Depending on how you'd like to use them. If all you want to do is schedule the new parameter, you have a couple of options. Add the parameter directly within the schedule itself. This will add a new parameter to your element family. Adding a parameter using this method adds it only to the element family in the schedule. For example, say you want to schedule the sound transmission class of a wall. You can add this property directly within the wall schedule and a new parameter would be available only to objects in the walls category. Add the parameter to the project. Using this method, you can still schedule the new parameter, but you'll have the option to add it to multiple categories. So if you want to add a parameter for unit cost, you can add that to both your door and window categories at the same time. If you want to be able to both schedule and tag your parameter, you will need to create a shared parameter. This parameter is created as part of a separate file that is shared among the tag family, the element family, and the project. An example of this kind of tag might be a door security hardware. <laughs> Excuse me. The F is silent. You can create a parameter that is assigned to a door family, as well as a door tag that allows you to designate whether a door has a card reader to gain entrance to a room. In the following sections, we will discuss how to create both of these parameter types, as well as the pros and cons. Cons. The big sting of each. Creating project parameters. You can create custom project parameters anytime in the project cycle. Depending on how you create the parameters, you can assign them to one or more element categories within the model. You can also assign them to elements that have already been created or to element categories for elements that you have yet to create. The following steps will allow you to make a custom parameter that can be scheduled but not tagged. For this example, pretend you are working on an existing building and reworking a space. Much of what is on site will need to be demolished, but you will like to reuse all the elements that are salvageable. <coughs> As you are documenting the existing conditions, you want to schedule the elements you want to keep. To do this, you'll make a parameter called reuse. Continue with the project file from the pre previous exercise, C19 dimension star or its metric equivalent on the book's companion webpage. To add a new project parameter, follow these steps. Go to the Manage tab in the ribbon and click the Project Parameters button. This will display the Project Parameters dialog box. Click the Add button to open the Parameter Properties dialog box. Here you will be asked to 
exclusive properties for the new parameter. Let's step through what these selections will be. The figure on the screen shows a view of the completed dialog box. Set parameter type to project parameter. Choosing between project and shared parameter is the first choice you'll need to make. We'll get to shared parameters later, so for now, leave that to the default uh, of project parameter. For name, type reuse. The name is used for describing the parameter, as well as referencing it in schedules and the properties palette. Leave the discipline setting at common. The, disi the discipline drop-down menu will give you a few choices. Common, structural, electrical, HVAC, piping, and energy. Set type of parameter to yes, no. This setting dictates the format or behavior of the parameter. As you can see in figure 19.47, a variety of parameter types are available. It's important to understand some of these options and more specifically their differences. If you start creating formulas for your parameter, you'll quickly understand how important it is to use the property type, the proper type. For instance, you cannot multiply angle times volume. Text cannot be added to a formula. Integers do not have decimal values. Many of these values are easy to understand if you apply a bit of logic. For type or instance, choose instance. This setting controls the uniqueness of the parameter itself. Both parameter types can be mixed within a given family. In this example, use, of an, use an instance parameter because you want to designate whether something is reusable on an element-by-element -element basis. See Chapter 2, Exploring the User projects for information on type and instance parameters. For group parameter under choose green building properties. This setting is an organization tool. When you open your element properties, depending on how many parameters you add, you can develop quite a long list. This tool allows you to group new parameters into any given category. This setting is an organizational tool. When you open your element properties, depending on how many parameters you add, you can develop quite a long list. This tool allows you to group new parameters into any given category. In the list of categories, check the boxes for doors, windows, and doors. Doors, windows, and furniture. Categories is the list of element types in which this new property will appear. This is where you define all the categories, types you'll associate with the new parameter. Category selections are flexible. If you decide you need to change categories after you create your parameter, you can easily come back to the project parameters tool and modify your selection to include more categories. You could select all of them. Again, the uh, key to this is uh, a, a lean model. When you, when you finish, Click OK. This will take you back to the project, pro uh, project parameters dialog box, where you can choose to add another parameter, or in your case, our case, just click OK to exit completely. <clears throat> back in the model,
you can now select a door because it is one of the categories you choose and see that you have added a reuse parameter in the form of a checkbox to the bottom of the properties list. Now you've created a custom parameter in the project, it's even easier to create one while in a schedule. You can create a custom parameter while creating a schedule or after the fact by modifying one. To create a parameter in a schedule, click the new parameter button in the schedule properties dialog box. Doing so opens the same dialog box that you see when you click the project parameter button, with the exception that the category selection is grayed out because you can create parameters and schedules only for the element being scheduled. Creating shared parameters. When you want to schedule and tag a custom parameter, you will need to use shared parameters. Previously, in this chapter, you learned that customized project parameters are useful for scheduling the STC rating on a wall. You can also use them to schedule which doors have security systems as part of the door hardware set. For example, or to specify which equipment in a lab will require special gases, oxygen, argon, and so forth. <clears throat> None of these parameters exist by default in any families. But they're all values that you might want to tag or schedule depending on the type of project you are working on. These parameters do not exist in any of the tags either, so in order to tag these parameters, you need to create them in both the tag and the element families. Don't worry, it is not as complicated as it all sounds. Page 838. It's complicated. It's more complicated than you think. Again, it all depends on your perspective. So don't worry. Don't worry. You have nothing to worry about. It's not as complicated as it all sounds. But you need to follow some steps fairly closely. Once you've added a shared parameter to your project, you cannot modify it. If you want to change it, you'll need to delete it and add the parameter again. So it behooves you to make your choices thoughtfully. Let's look at the workflow behind creating a shared parameter. You do this by creating a custom wall parameter called STC so you can take the sound transmission class of the wall types. To get started, continue using the, the project that we're using and we're going to get into it. Creating the shared parameter. The first thing you do is create a new shared parameter file. This file transplants the values of the shared parameter between the tag, family, and the project. Follow these steps. To create a shared parameter, go to the Manage tab in the ribbon and click the Shared Parameters tool. Doing so opens the Edit Shared Parameters dialog box. <laughs> Click the create whoop, the shared parameter file. See users M Lipinski Dropbox. Your requested shop lighting LED lumen pulse short cylinder S does not exist. I deleted it. It was a shared parameter file that came in with a light that I had downloaded from a manufacturer. So as you can see. 
that is the uh, copy here. Let me bring this over to here. Let me bring this over to here. Let me bring this over to here. Bring this over to here. Pardon me, I, I file everything. Name your shared parameter file. Excuse me. Oops, it wants to come back. Hold on, give it a second. Okay. Uh, create. The create button. Yeah, click the create button to open the create shared parameter file dialog box. Name your shared parameter file. For our example, we named it to STC. However, <clears throat> if you plan to make more than one shared parameter, you might want to name it something more universal. All of the shared parameters for a given project will ultimately live in the same file. Give the file name and location that will give sense to the project team. Okay. Let's get some crazy name. Then click Save. Now that you've saved the TXT file, you'll return to the Edit Shared Parameters window where you'll assign this parameter to a group by selecting New under the Groups option. This keeps, this keeps like elements grouped together. This group is a hierarchical collection. So for the Walls STC, Sound Transmission class, being of sound of mind and body. For the sound transmission class, you'll want to create a group called wall properties. This grouping allows you to easily sort different parameters within project categories once you name the group. Click OK. Excuse me, I'm just uh, a little tired. Okay, so now, this is where we're going to assign this parameter to a group by selecting New under the Groups option. Into the new group here, we're going to, like the direction said, we're going to uh, call this Wall Properties. This grouping allows you to easily sort different parameters within project categories. Once you name the group, click OK. Once you have a group, you'll see that the parameters button are now the parameter buttons, the parameters plural, buttons plural, are now active. Click the new button and name the parameter STC, sound transmission class. STC. Leave the discipline setting in common for, ty for type of parameter. Choose integer. Because STC ratings are whole numbers, you can use the integer type and eliminate any decimal places you have used if you've used number as the type. Once you've entered the settings, click OK.
Once you've entered the settings, click OK. You should see the new STC parameter in this Edit Shared Parameters dialog box. Click OK to exit this dialog box. You've now created a shared parameter. The next step is to assign it to a category. Assigning the shared parameter to a category. The shared parameter is now defined, but you don't have it associated with any categories yet. To do so, follow these steps. From the Manage tab in the ribbon, click the Pro Project Properties button to open the Project Parameters dialog box. You want to add a new parameter, so click Add. The Parameter Properties dialog box opens. This time, select the Shared Parameter radio button and then click Select in the Shared Parameters dialog box. Select STC parameter you just created and then click OK. Two thousand twenty doesn't have a radio button. In the shared parameters dialog box, select STC parameter you just entered and then click OK. <coughs> You'll see that many of the fields are now grayed out in the parameter properties dialog box. This is because you have already specified this information in the shared parameter. In the categories list, select walls, click OK to exit the dialog box. We don't have to do that again. Project Properties, Add, Cancel. From the Manage tab of the ribbon, click the Project Parameters button to open the Project Parameters dialog box. You want to add a new parameter, so click Add. The Parameter Properties dialog box opens. This time, select the Shared Parameter radio button. And then click Select. In the Shared Parameters dialog box, select the STC parameter you just created, then click OK. You'll see that many of the fields are now grayed out in the Parameter Properties dialog box. This is because you have already specified this information in the Shared Parameter. In the Categories list, select Walls. Click OK to exit the dialog box. You'll see the new shared parameter, STC, below your previous project parameter, Reuse. In the Project Parameters dialog box, click OK to close the dialog box. Assigning the shared parameter to a category. It shows a few dialog boxes that uh, are um, replicants of that particular uh, passage. Now, the subsequent passages, um, I'll read verbatim. Now that the STC parameter is part of the project, you can begin assigning values to it. Open the level one floor plan and select one of the interior walls on the left side of the plan. By scrolling down the properties palette, you'll notice that the STC parameter is now at the bottom. Enter a value of 45 and click Y, or simply move your mouse out of the palette to set the value. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, that was an accident. I'm sorry, yeah, so now this SCC parameter is part of the project, you can begin assigning values to it. Open level one floor plan and select one of the interior walls on the left side of the plan. By scrolling down on the properties palette, you'll notice that the STC parameter is now at the bottom. Enter a value of 45. And click apply. Or simply move the mouse out of the palette to set the value. Tagging the shared parameter. So far, you've created a shared parameter and added it to, wall, to the walls category in the project. These are all features you should have leveraged with a project parameter. You could have leveraged with a project parameter. 
The benefit of using a shared parameter is being able to tag it. The final step in this process is creating a tag to display the STC parameter on the wall. The first thing you'll need is a new tag because you're tagging a wall and there isn't a default wall tag type. You'll need to make a generic tag and apply it to a wall condition. From the application menu, select new family. Open the annotations folder, select generic tagged RFA and click open. Next, you will assign the correct category to the tag. By default, a generic tag is just that, generic. You want to report information from the walls category, so on the create tab in the properties area, click the family category and parameters button. With the family category and parameters dialog box open, choose wall tags from the list. And click OK. Delete the red box note in the tag family template before continuing. Just uh, note, use properties, family categories, and parameters to set the tag's category. Insertion point is at the intersection of the reference points. Delete this note before using. <clears throat> With the proper category selected, you need to add a label for your tag. From the Create tab in the ribbon, select the Label tool in the text panel and then just Click just above the intersection of the two reference planes in the view. <clears throat> in the Edit Label dialog box, select Type Mark from the list of category parameters and add it to the Label Parameters list to the right. This will call out the wall type and help you associate the parameter, the, the proper wall, with the STC rating. Click OK to close the dialog box and zoom in closer to the label you just placed. <clears throat> With the mark parameter placed, let's add the STC parameter. Activate the Label tool again, and then click just below the intersection of the reference planes in the view. Excuse me. In the Edit Label dialog box, click the Add Parameter button at the bottom of the category. With the type mark parameter place, let's add the STC parameter. Activate the label tool again and click just below the intersections of the reference planes in the view in the edit dialog in the edit label dialog box. Click the add parameter button. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. At the bottom at the bottom of the category. Parameters list. This opens the parameter properties dialog box. Click select to open the shared parameter dialog box. Select STC and click OK. Then click OK again. You'll now see the STC parameter in the category parameters list. Select it and add it to the right side of the dialog box. Click OK to close the dialog box. <clears throat> With 
With all these labels added, you can brush up on the tag. You can brush up the tag with a bit of line work to help differentiate the tag from the rest of the drawing. On the Create tag, tab, choose the Line tool from the Detail panel using the default options. Draw a box around the two labels and a line between them. Once this is done, save the family as wall stc.rfa and then load it into the project by clicking the Load into Project button. My advice would be to constrain the box and add a, uh, a length width and a height parameter. If indeed you're going to add something that's a lot longer than two integers, just to reference. You want it to expand with the, the, the amount of text that you put in there, but this is only going to be 45. It's only going to be a 45. <clears throat> Once this is done, save the family's wall, stc.rfa, and load it into the project file. Save as family, and if you remember, we created a uh, directory tree. One second, if you remember, we created a our own little directory for uh, the IFC uh, Kobe compliant. Remember. Hold on. Back, 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 back. Load it back into the project. Back in the project, you're ready to take the wall. Once you insert the tag into the project file, Revit will automatically begin the tagging command. However, the other way to begin tagging is to choose Tag by Category from the Annotate tab. Select the wall to which you have already given a value of 45 for the STC. You'll see the wall type and STC rating populate within the tag. <laughs> Once you step through this workflow a few times, it will quickly, yeah, sure it will, it will quickly become familiar and you'll be able to add custom parameters to projects and tag them without a second thought. One thing to keep in mind while you're doing all this, however, is that once you have added a shared parameter to your project, you will not be able to change any of the properties of the parameter itself. If you set the parameter type to integer, but you really want a number, you'll need to delete the parameter and start over. Also, when working with a team, remember that shared parameters work much like keynotes with their external TXT files. If you are sharing the project file with the idea that it will be edited by another team, make sure to include the shared parameter file. Shared par this is a manager's note. Shared parameters beyond tagging. Um, we have just 
finished a section on how to create your own shared parameters and use them to create tags that are not part of the default other categories. But as with all parameters, your use of shared parameters is not limited to only tagging. In one project, for example, we were designing a manufacturing facility. This facility had a large amount of process equipment and the various pieces of equipment had special design needs such as argon and nitrogen gases, compressed air, or special electrical power. We wanted to tag the equipment in our drawings, but we also wanted to, an easy way to visualize which pieces of equipment needed what kinds of service, kind of services. To do this, we combined the shared parameter file we created for the tags and used color filters discussed in Chapter 11, working with phasing groups and design options to color the equipment and plan and help the design teams make sure we were supplying the right services to the right elements. The bottom line, annotate with text and keynotes. Although a picture is worth a thousand words, you still need notes to make drawings understandable and be able to call out key elements in each view. Know how to create and modify text and keynotes for a complete set of documents. Master it. To properly use the keynote feature, the keynoting feature, you need to understand what each of the three keynote types do and how they're used. List each and explain how they can be used in a project. Use tags. Tags are text labels for elements such as doors, walls, windows, and rooms, and several other objects that architects typically need to reference in a set of drawings. These tags typically refer to other schedules or information in other portions of the drawing set and are unique to the view in which they are inserted. Master it. Inserting tags quickly can be a good way to make documentation time more efficient. How can you quickly tag a number of elements in the model at the same time? That's a question for you. Add dimensions. Dimensioning is a critical part of the project documentation, allowing you to communicate the distance elements from uh, how, excuse me, add dimensions. Dimensioning is a critical part of the project documentation, allowing you to communicate the distant elements are from one another. Master it. Adding dimensions is a necessary part in any project. However, in a project workflow, you would typically want to change the location of a dimensions witness line without having to recreate the entire dimension. That's good to know. I wouldn't want to have to go through all of that again. How do you move a witness line without remaking the entire dimension? <laughs> Set project and shared parameters. Revit architecture lets users add as many custom parameters to an element as are needed to document the project. These parameters can be both tagged and scheduled depending on how they are made. Master it. You need to add a custom parameter for your project to track the percentage of recycled content in materials. What's the best way to go about doing this? For starters, buy lots of coffee. Practice. 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 That's another way.